Black Lost 5th edition person a man considered according to the rank he holds in society with all the rights to which the place he holds entitles him and the duties which it imposes. Black Law states that a person is a man considered according to the rank the rank he holds in society with all the rights to which the place he holds entitles him. So a person means a man according to the rank according to the designation that that man has taken and the rights and the duties if you will add that he is entitled because of that position because of that place so when you say man or when you say person you're describing a man who is considered according to the rank notice that the rank he holds in society and the rights and the freedoms that that man has is according to according to the place he holds in society a man he has rights and duties and obligations according to the rank that he holds another was saying that is according to the designation that he's under or according to the position that he holds so a man in law can either be a legal person a legal person with rights duties and privileges however these rights duties and privileges are very limited and we are paying for them as that legal person or the man can be the human the natural person with rights and freedoms that are intrinsic and inalienable to him there's a difference now it depends on what rank or what position the man takes according to what freedoms will be granted to him. Now most of us are, who haven't uh, sought relief or haven't claimed our rights as human beings are considered the legal person and that's the position that we're holding in society, a legal person, not a free human being. Bouvier's Law Revised 6th Edition Person The word person is applied to men, women and children who are called natural persons. In law, men and person are not exactly synonymous terms. Any human being is a man. Any human being is a man, whether he be a member of society or not. Whatever may be the rank he holds or whatever may be his age, sex. A person is a man considered according to the rank he holds in society, with all the rights to which the place he holds entitles him. In John Bouvier's legal dictionary, you have the word person, defined as such. This word is applied, applied to men who are called natural persons in law so natural persons means a man now man and person are not exactly synonymous terms so when you say the word man and you say the word person they're not exactly the same terms you're not describing the same thing so if you say the word man and you say the word natural persons you don't mean the exact same thing a natural person is a lot higher or very much more free compared to an artificial person. However, when you use the term natural person, it's not synonymous with man. Not exactly. It's very close, but not exactly. John Bouvier again says, any human being is a man. So anytime you say the word human being, I am a human being, I have human rights, you are describing a man. Now listen to this, whether he be a member of society or not, 
So here they're even teaching you that it's possible to be withdrawn from society, to not be part of the society, and still to be considered a man and a human being with your intrinsic rights. Otherwise, why would John Bouvier state whether he be a member of society or not? It's because these people are very aware of the operations of law that are going on. So they happen to just paraphrase it in this article or in this description. But when you say that you are a human being, you are now uh, declaring yourself to be a man, without any person attached to it. Bouvier's Law, Revised 6th Edition Man, a human being. This definition includes not only the adult male sex of the human species, but woman and children. Examples of offenses against man. Some are more immediately against the king, others more immediately against the subject. Artificial persons, such as are created and devised by law for the purpose of society and government, called corporations or bodies politic. Natural persons, such as are formed by nature as distinguished from artificial persons or corporations. In society, meaning in the commercial structure, commerce, in the government bodies, what you would term Canada, a person in society is either legal, which is a fiction, an artificial person, and it pays for privileges and rights, or in society, in all that's going on, in their law that they created, in what they're doing here, you can claim the natural person. And that natural person has intrinsic rights. Intrinsic rights. That's in society, in the system. So if you start walking around, and you're part of the system, and you start saying that, I am a human being, in this system, well, guess what? There's going to be have to be some accountability on somebody's part because you're declaring that you're a natural person with intrinsic rights, and that natural person is indeed an operation in law in the system, in the society. Now, a human being is a man. A human being is a man in or out of society out of the system. So if you take your rights and freedoms as a human being, as a man, out of the system and society, there's still that obligation that remains. You re regain your inalienable and intrinsic rights by declaring yourself to be a human being. Even if you're in the system and you say, I'm a human being, they will deal with you as a natural person. But you regain your human rights. Out of the system, when you say, I'm a human being, I'm a man, like a lot of people are trying to express, well then you are gain your freedoms, your intrinsic rights that are in those covenants, that are in the Universal Declaration that Canada acknowledges in Article 26 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. So when you want to operate in Article 11, in the International Covenant of Social, Political and Economic Rights, you have no problem to do it because you're out of the system and you're being recognized as a human, therefore a man, whose rights must be respected. But when you're in the system, as that legal person, you are very controlled, very limited, and you will not have your fundamental rights respected. If you go to the government and say, you're not providing me my fundamental rights, and if you haven't taken care of this whole business of being recognized as a human being, as a man, they will say, we created, for example, the welfare system, or we created the unemployment insurance system, and that is a representation of what we believe you are entitled to, because they strip you of your fundamental rights. Now, you can prove to them that these systems do not meet the obligations that they have in these charters in the Declaration of Human Rights, in the International Covenants. You can prove to the government 
that as a human being, as a man or a woman, their obligations in these charters are not being met for you. So you're stepping out of the society and out of the system and you're reclaiming your inalienable rights and making a claim for relief to them.